It was 2 a.m. on a Tuesday. I should have been asleep, but instead, I was deep in a GitHub scroll. I love seeing what developers are building, but this time, I found something unsettling. A simple search for phone location led me to a world of open source intelligence tools, OSINT, ready for anyone to use. These weren't clunky scripts, they had clean interfaces, step-by-step -step guides, and active communities. The tools claimed to track phones, gather data, and visualize information with just a few commands. It was all public, all accessible, and surprisingly easy to use. My excitement was mixed with dread. If I could find this, who else could? And what were they doing with it? This was the classic tech dilemma. Powerful tools for good, or for something much less noble. I decided to dive in, not to hack, but to understand. I spun up a virtual machine to keep things safe and started exploring. What could these tools really do? How did they work? What did they mean for our privacy? The night was young, and my curiosity was in overdrive. This wasn't about breaking into systems, it was about seeing what information we're already putting out there. I wanted to know just how exposed are we, really. So I kept clicking, deeper and deeper. The rabbit hole was open, and I was falling fast. I had no idea just how much I'd learned before sunrise. Let's clear something up. None of this is hacking. When people hear phone tracking, they picture Hollywood hackers breaking into satellites. That's not what's happening here. These tools use OSINT, open source intelligence, gathering info from public sources. We share more public data than we realize. Social media, online accounts, public directories, even data breaches. The tools automate the process, connecting dots that would take a human hours to find. It's not about breaking in, it's about finding the keys we've left lying around. The real shock isn't that this info exists, but how easy it is to collect and organize. These aren't messy code dumps, they're polished, user-friendly projects. Seeing your digital footprint neatly packaged in a report changes your perspective on public. This isn't a guide to becoming a secret agent, it's a wake-up call about digital hygiene, the developers frame these tools as resources for security researchers or journalists, but anyone can use them. Because they're open source, anyone means everyone. That's what kept me up, the sheer accessibility. Our vulnerability isn't hidden, it's right out in the open, and most of us have no idea. The first tool I tried was called Geophone. Its job? Find the approximate location of a phone number and show it on a map. Setup was a breeze, clone the repo, install a few dependencies, and you're ready. Geophone doesn't hack GPS or cell towers. Instead, it uses public APIs and databases that link phone numbers to locations. For example, your phone number's prefix can reveal your country and carrier. The tool cross-references public data, then estimates a location. I tested it with public business numbers. Seconds later, I had a map with a pin on the right city. It also showed carrier, country, and line type. The simplicity was chilling, just a command, and you get a location. Accuracy depends on the data, but even a city or region is a big clue. It's not real-time tracking, but it doesn't need to be. For basic intelligence, knowing the city and carrier is huge. Geophone was my first taste of how OSINT tools turn abstract data into something real, and it was just the beginning. Next up was OSINT X, a digital detective for phone numbers. Its goal, find everything public about a number, from social media to data breaches. OSINTX runs the number through multiple scanners, modules that check social media, breach records, directories, and more. It automates what would take hours to do by hand. I ran a public number as a test. The tool checked Facebook, Google, data breaches, and more, then spit out a tidy report. It listed country, carrier, social media links, and even flagged past breaches. The data breach scanner was especially eye-opening, revealing which services tied to that number had been compromised. OSINTX can only find what's public, but most people aren't careful with their data. We use our numbers everywhere, two-factor authentication, shopping, newsletters. Each use creates a new link for tools like this to find. Our phone number is no longer private, it's a universal username. OSINTX made that painfully clear, and it raised the stakes for what I'd find next. By now, it was nearly 4 a.m., but I couldn't stop. The last tool I tried was Ghost Track, the most comprehensive suite of all. Ghost Track combined everything phone lookup, location tracking, social media analysis, and more. 
It could start with a phone number or email and build a detailed profile in minutes. One feature stood out. It could generate a phishing link that, if clicked, would request the target's GPS location. This crossed a line from passive data collection to active social engineering. The interface was slick, with modules for every task. With just a number, you could map someone's likely location, social circles, interests, and even get their photo. The phishing feature was unsettling. It weaponizes curiosity and trust. These tools create a ladder of intrusiveness, from basic info to real-time GPS and a full dossier. All open source, all public. Ghost Track showed me how thin the line is between public and private, and how easy it is to cross. As dawn broke, I sat back, uneasy. The shock wasn't that these tools existed, but how easy and effective they were. This isn't just for government agencies. Anyone with a laptop can do it. The real issue isn't GitHub or open source. It's our own digital habits. Every sign-up, post, or check-in leaves a breadcrumb. Tools like Geophone, OSINT X, and GhostTrack gather those crumbs into a loaf of information. Public info isn't just what we broadcast, it's metadata, breach records, even photo details. These tools find and interpret the hidden layer of public data we forget about. The result? Vulnerability. I wanted to lock down my accounts, change settings, and rethink what I share. My digital footprint suddenly felt very real. A few data points can paint a detailed picture of anyone's life, and that's a sobering realization at 5 a.m. So what's the takeaway from my 2 a.m. OSINT deep dive? We need to be more deliberate about our digital footprint. This isn't about paranoia, it's about common sense security. Our phone number is now a universal ID. Protect it. Use alternatives for two-factor authentication and think twice before sharing your main number. Regularly review your privacy settings, apps change, and so do their defaults. Limit who can find you by phone or email, and control what apps can access. A little digital housekeeping goes a long way. Awareness is your best defense. You don't need to be an expert, just informed. Knowing these tools exist changes your behavior for the better. You become more cautious, more skeptical, and more secure. Tools like Ghost Track don't mean we should live in fear. They mean we can make smarter choices online. This discovery raises a bigger question. Who's responsible? It's easy to blame the tools or the platforms, but the reality is complex. These tools use public info. Banning them is like banning search engines. The technology is neutral, intent matters. Developers have a responsibility to consider misuse, and many include ethical disclaimers or safeguards. Platforms like GitHub walk a fine line, balancing openness with community guidelines. The debate over hosting potentially harmful tools is ongoing and tough. Ultimately, responsibility lands on us, the users. We're the source of the data. We need to take ownership of our digital footprint and demand better privacy controls. Support companies that value privacy and educate yourself and others. Developers and platforms can't solve this alone. Personal responsibility is the foundation of digital safety. As my all-nighter ended, I felt both tired and energized. My rabbit hole adventure was a reminder. Technology is powerful, but not without risks. Discovering these tools wasn't a scare tactic. It was a call to be more thoughtful and safe. Stay curious. Learn how your data is used. Ask questions. You don't need to be a tech expert, just aware. Curiosity helps you protect yourself. At the same time, stay safe. Audit your privacy settings, use a password manager, and consider a secondary phone number. Small steps make you a harder target. Safety isn't about building walls, it's about making smart choices. The internet is amazing, but we have to be active participants, not just passive users. So stay curious, stay safe, and keep exploring. Just maybe do it before 2 a.m. You'll sleep better.